Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Anyway, Tom, I've got a number of questions for you today uh, on ongoing policy changes at the EPA. Before I get, I'm going to build on what my colleague, Mr. Green, was asking you, but I care very deeply about one of the activities that you are doing, and that is the mid-cycle review and the fuel economy standard. First, given recent press reports, I thought there was a good meeting at the White House on Friday, but yesterday's afternoon post made me think that that was not the case. Mr. Rahm, I understand that Administrator Pruitt sat down with the President and a number of the CEOs, automakers, last Friday to discuss automotive fuel economy and GHG emission standards. In that meeting, I understand the President directed Administrator Pruitt and Transportation Secretary Chow to reach out and negotiate a possible deal with California to ensure that we have one national program in this country for fuel economy and that GHG standards are maintained. I was happy to hear that. That's what the autos say that they need. California has said that they would work with everybody. But I'm concerned that yesterday I heard that that was not the case, that you were not going to work with California, signaling the exact opposite of what we heard on Friday. It's troubling because the auto industry needs stability. They need to know where they're going. Can you tell me what EPA is doing on this, please? Yes, Mrs. Congresswoman. Uh, I wasn't in the meeting with the President, so I can't speak to what was said or what was not said. Uh, like you and like everyone else, I've gotten reports about it. Um, so I'm not going to do what he said and she said about that. But I, I can tell you we were working very hard on a proposed rule. You know the Administrator issued a determination not long ago saying he thinks a change needs to be made to the current standards in the 21 and 25 time frame. And, and we're hard at work on that in conjunction with NHTSA on on a proposed rule that would suggest uh, some possible changes based on the administrator's findings and Secretary Chow's similar concerns. Mm -hmm. But does EPA understand the importance to the auto industry of one national standard and that the importance of what was originally negotiated was having all the players at one table and that if you care about jobs, having two sets of standards so that they're producing one car for 14 states and another is not going to give the companies the certainty they need? Um, I I'll speak for myself and say absolutely. I understand the, the the importance of that, and what I would say is it's 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 a priority of you know my office, and I believe a priority of the administration to to try to maintain one national program. So I, I think to the degree the press reports are saying that that's not a goal, I, I would say that's wrong. But what I would say is we think changes need to be made, and we have started a dialogue with the state of California. I personally have been involved in those conversations. We plan to continue that dialogue consistent with what the president said in last week's meeting. And in fact, as we speak, are trying to set up uh, the next discussion with our, our colleagues in, at CARB for Wednesday. They're going to be here this week for, for meetings, and we're hoping to get together with them while they're here in town. So. We, we have a dialogue underway. We, we intend to continue that dialogue, and if we can find a way to maintain one national program, mm -hmm. we certainly want to do that. I know California wants to do it. I know the OEMs want to do it, and we're going to try. I find that reassuring. I would love your personal commitment to keep trying to make that happen because we all care about the health of the auto industry. We're going to keep trying. Um, let me go quickly because I'm going to run out of time and build on what my colleague Mr. Green was asking about in Once In, Always In. Is it as when Secretary Pruitt or Administrator Pruitt testified at a Senate oversight hearing that he said that the decision to end once in, uh, always in policy was made outside of your office? Is that accurate? Was the decision to rescind the once in, always in policy made outside of your office? What was your role, if any, in the decision uh, to rescind this policy? Well, I signed the memo. Um, but anything I do is based on the authority of the administrator. So I can tell you that he was highly involved in the vetting. He was highly involved in setting the policy. And I ultimately issued the memo. But it's a reflection of, of the, the agency's position. So I've got 25 seconds left. And I'll probably ask you to do more of this for the record. But you were talking that you didn't do do studies studied the issue, but we haven't seen anything. And we need to have more transparency about what the impact was going to be, about when it was conducted, is it publicly available. You know, we've got these Union of Concerned Scientists saying that 
there'll be an additional 155 tons of hazardous air pollutants per year. Can we make that data available that you've analyzed? Well, an important part of what we said when the memo came out is we intend to follow up the memo with the rulemaking so we can lock in our new policy is actually part of the codified regulations. So that will be an opportunity for everyone with an interest uh, to look at our assessment, to look at our analysis, and to give us their comments as to whether they think it's right or not. Thank you. General, time's expired, Chair.